everyone. So today's video is the first in a series of four where I'm going to talk to some musicians who played on my upcoming record, Past Life View. It's coming out September 16th, streaming everywhere. And I was so fortunate to have a couple players, fantastic players on this record. Today's conversation is with Lee Tucker. Lee is a trumpet player and more out of Columbus, Ohio, which you'll hear about. He was on a track called A Place to Go on my upcoming record. And we'll listen to that a little bit and talk a little bit more about Lee and his career and his life and um, our experience together in the studio. So thanks so much. Enjoy. Hey, man. Yes. How are you? Hey, actually, let me get, that's a good idea. Let me grab my, uh, my earbuds, earbuds. Yeah. Hey, earbuds, right that was a great movie. Right. It was a great movie. I'm going <laughs> to give you a beer. Uh... Okay, so let me explain what I'm doing here. First of all, thanks for doing this. Sure. Silly Zoom meeting stuff. I'm sure we don't need more of these. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. First off, uh, tell us about what you do. Well, my name is Lee Tucker. And I play trumpet and related instruments like flugelhorn and cornet and whatnot uh, in various bands around Columbus. Uh, one of the main projects I'm working on called Thomas and the Workman. We're a, uh, like an indie rock, indie funk kind of band, groove band. And we have a lot of fun. We play mostly originals, but we have a decent catalog of covers as well. Even a little bit that we worked together, or even just talked, you've done such a, a wide array of different genres. Uh, yeah, like taking the trumpet away and doing some hip hop verse or something. I'm like, you're kind of all over genre wise. Yeah. Oh, you're, I, I know what you're talking about now. You were talking about that when I used to work at Natalie's, uh, which is a great venue in Columbus. We had a staff party where we all formed bands and we did a Lauren Hill song. And I, oh, man. Ra- I wrapped a verse of that, which was, I guess, slightly out of place for me as a white man to yeah. rap a Lauren Hill verse. But she has phenomenal music and that was a lot of fun. Well. What was that from the Miseducation record? What, what song? Yeah, was it was. Uh, I think we did Everything is Everything. Oh, I mean, yeah. So good. Yeah. Okay, so I think I got your contact through Brandon McQueen. Yeah. And I feel like I saw you everywhere after that, all over town. But I brought you in for a song uh, with Terry, right? You guys both came in together. Do you remember anything about the session? It was really kind of like a workshop. It's like, you know, you had sent Terry and I both the song and you had sent us like, you know, what you had worked up in terms of like a line on sheet music. And it was, kind, you know, it was kind of there, but in terms of the harmonies and where the line sat in the phrase, like we, we kind of had to figure that out in the moment. And I don't know, it was just a fun like hour and a half chopping it out in the shed with Terry. Like, you know. Yeah. I'd never worked or recorded horns ever. Um, really? Yeah, I'd never done it. And so I had to learn to like, first of all, write for horns. So I wrote something more um, finite for you guys, but I still was trying to come with, come to terms with what you guys could do in there, which is so much, it adds so much dynamic to the track. Yeah. That's what was, that's what's cool about it is you get multi, you get a lot of minds working on the same problem. You didn't necessarily know exactly what you wanted it to be. You were just like, "Look, I know that I have this kind of idea for what it could be. Let's see what we can make of it." And yeah, I think that was a that was a cool approach to it because you know that it it get, it, it really helps. And I can say this from a freelance perspective, like. It, it's really special when someone really 
wants and values your creative input. Yeah, I think it's because, you know, you could show up and just play the charts, right? You could just play right. what's Which on I there. Which I do but a lot of times. That gives you a little bit of freedom. Yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, I don't know, it's just a cool collaborative process. And we were kind of in the middle of quarantine, I think. I can't yeah. remember. Time is like, I don't remember exactly when it was. I ended up bringing people like kind of one by one, like I was doing with you guys. Ironically led me to work with more people than I had yeah. before quarantine, which is weird. I mean, did, did you feel like it was stretched out? Did you feel like it took longer to get everything recorded because you were meeting with everyone individually or? No, I think actually the length of time, this was one of the longer recording cycles I've done. But that was more because I felt like I had the time and the liberty to like sure. to be creative and to kind of dig into what I was hearing rather and like follow that. Whereas before pragmatics of like, well, this person has to go to work <laughs> or like yeah, right. we're we're kind of on the wire or I have huge deadlines or I have uh, family events I got to go do. All of those things were putting blocks in the way of me pursuing ideas fully whereas during that time i think i could just well there's no reason not to follow that rabbit <laughs> right let's listen to a little bit of it um sure I'm, I'm gonna jump in i think i joined the audio hopefully it works here we go oh it's getting spicy i think it's working And then you come in at the end again on the place we used to go. Think of me, think of me. And there's the bridge. So, any reactions, I don't know, from hearing that? Well, it sounds really good. Uh, Brandon did a really nice job. I think everything sounds really nice. Um, I hadn't, you know, I don't think I've heard it since we recorded it. So, it's cool to hear it and be like, oh, yeah, that we like, you know, we made, we brought that together. That's what, we babble, we we babble, da. Like, that was like the part that you had written, right? And then like uh -huh. the that was like the call. And then the response part is kind of what we came up with that day in the studio. Is that right? Yeah. The bridge. I had no idea. I feel like you kind of had, you had a lot of it together and the horns are just kind of icing on the cake. So it came together easily. I feel like. When I hear it back now, you guys feel so tight um, part wise, like it's almost hard to hear two horns it feels like one thing it's like one movement together um, right and that's the goal you know like whenever you're as as a horn player whenever you're playing with any other horns whether it's a the exact same instrument or a instrument of the same family or another like a woodwind and a brass instrument the idea is to when what rather when you're doing section playing the idea is to have one unified sound Mm -hmm. you know and but it still sounds old of, like it's not like hi-fi cut like it sounds like an old kind of performance right and that's the acoustic element of it i feel like you know we're not recording through uh it's not like we're recording a live performance where everything's distorted and blown up it's like we're really trying to get the acoustic the raw acoustic harmony that's one that's yeah. one thing that i love about playing horn and it's like just last night, I actually the uh, on this wedding gig, the power went out for like for like two or three minutes, and we were playing uh, we were playing "I Will Survive" by Gloria Gaynor, and just m me and the sax player Kevin O'Neill and the drummer Nate Parker just kept playing for three minutes. You know, we were just like, "All right, well, like people are doing limbo, like the party's happening, like we got to just the music's got to keep going." So we just played nonstop it got kind of, you know it got kind of crazy but 
that's the power of acoustic music. You, know, you can do so that with an acoustic cool. guitar, a drum, a acoustic bass, a horn. So the bass player and the guitar player and the singers, because no one can hear them, just dropped right. out. Yeah, and, they had guys, and a keyboard. Yeah. Did, did people like it? Like, did it have yeah. almost a reverse people kept reaction? Going. It, yeah, it was cool. It was like everyone was like, whoa, for a, like half a second. And then we kept playing. So everyone was like, oh, I guess the party's still going. And then, uh, you know, right when it was starting to get strenuous, it was like, all right, this has been like three and a half minutes of me not taking the horn off my face. I'm about to, I, I need to breathe. Like the power came back on. <laughs> it was it, it was perfect. Time. I'm losing air. <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm sure Nate didn't miss a beat. He's so, he's nope. so solid. Yep, he really uh. is cool well man thank you so much i want to end first of all what is what's going on with you what's what's next what are you doing what are you looking at music wise you know i'm trying to keep the horn on my face as many days of the week as i can uh and i'm still playing with these groups that i had mentioned earlier and uh always looking for new opportunities as well and very i don't know if i want to say it I will though, but loosely considering, uh, like post grad education, like potentially, oh, wow. uh, going to get a master's degree. I feel like uh, I could kind of use that extra little kick in the butt. Um, I don't know. There's a lot that can be learned from teaching. For one, it's like you know to go be a master's student. A lot of times you'll get a TA ship or something. So mm. I don't know. I'm thinking about that just trying to continue to widen my breadth as a musician. I want to continue to get better at singing and trumpet, obviously. And I noodle around on piano every once in a while. Maybe I'll actually hunker down and get good enough to, to play some gigs doing that. Cause I know there's always a need for rhythm section players for the time being. I enjoy having a day job so that I can really focus on the enjoyment aspect of music. Because I have a lot of friends who, some of which are very successful full-time musicians, but a lot of them also are, you know, working 60, 70 hour weeks doing, saying yes to every possible gig they can because they need the money. And it's, it's like, I don't know. I, yeah, I enjoy totally. being able to, to play gigs on weekends with friends. and Well, you come to it so fresh that way, right? You come to it right. ready for it and and like wanting it with that like, desire right whereas yeah. i feel like if if you're doing it all the time it's so difficult and it taxes you so much that you're kind of just showing up maybe not with that thing right well and also i feel like i just i feel like i'm slowly getting to a point where i can make music more of my sole source of income but it's i'm doing it at a lot slower pace than a lot of people because mm -hmm. i am trying to diversify that where it's like you know, I don't want to just do one type of gig. I want to say, I want to play gigs with Sean Marshall and I want to play gigs with Blue Water Kings and I want to play gigs with, you know, Hello Emerson and Terrence Farmer. I want to yeah. play, I want to say yes to all the, I want to, I want to play with as many people as I can. And well, dude, thank you so much for coming in on this track and just like kind of changing my, <laughs> my musical world. Like it's changed the concept of how I hear, like, then I asked you to do a Lindsey Jordan record because I'm like, wait, trumpet should go on this. And it's uh, it's opened up a whole bunch of things. So thank you so much, man. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you, uh, you know, as a human, as a musician. And and thank you for, you know, reaching out and asking for my uh, my trumpet playing and my input in this project, in these projects. It's a crazy little world, you know, to to be doing it this is. stuff it's like um really tough thing to do so we gotta support those who are doing it absolutely keep me in mind for the next project man i'll do the same for you i've got a couple of songs that i'm trying to work up so hell yeah you're on my short list likewise for better or worse <laughs> <laughs> this has been nice i appreciate it likewise you take care you too sean